In the previous video, we learned what makes for a happy customer and why improving their experience in Jira Service Desk is crucial for our businesses. Now, we'll take a closer look at the Help Center. The Help Center is the first touch point for our customers when they meet issues with our products or services. When our customers come here, they see the customer portals they have access to. There is also a smart search where they can look for specific request types or knowledge base articles. On the header bar, they can see how many requests they or their organization have raised, as well as go to the My Requests screen with the list of all these requests and check their statuses. However, we can give our customers more enclosure into what they can see on the Help Center. The first thing we can do in the Service Desk project settings is setting up custom request types to make them clear to our customers. We can do that by using keywords or phrases our customers are familiar with for request names adding explanations to the descriptions and setting different icons, including the custom ones, which will make it easier for our clients to identify the right request type. An important theme here is that request types do not equal to issue types you see in Jira as an agent. So if you need to have a custom issue type, you will have to set it up separately in the issue type settings. An advantage though is that you can assign multiple request types to one issue type. For example, your customer sees book a room and book an apartment as separate requests which fall into the same category for the agents afterwards. Also, we can make it even simpler for our clients by creating request types groups, which will appear besides the request types list. To add a request type to a group, you either click Edit Groups and then check the ones you need to add it to, or go for Add an existing request type and do it vice versa. The Customer Permission section gives us the possibility to manage access to customer portals. However, it is somewhat narrow. We can only select who can raise requests on our customer portal. The customers who are added to the project, those who have an account on our Jira site, or just anyone. The possibility to define with whom our clients can share their requests also doesn't have too many options. We can only choose between other customers within their organization, any customer by typing their email address, or any customer or organization by searching in the project. The portal settings allow us to adjust the look and feel of the customer portal and apply the basics of our brand style to it. Here I can see the changes on the fly, which is handy. What we can do here is change the front page title and the help sender name, or add our logo and brand colors to the header panel. An interesting thing is that if we upload the logo, Jira can generate a matching color scheme automatically. However, it doesn't work for white logos, and if we have specific brand colors, we'd rather set them up manually. We can also add announcements, which will inform our customers about the changes in reception working hours or recurring issues that are taken care of and don't need to be reported anymore. When we are satisfied with what we see, we can connect Jira Service Desk with a knowledge base in Confluence, which basically enables self-service. Customers will be able to find answers for their questions by typing a query into the search bar, provided that you write these answers for them. You have the link to the official Atlassian guide in the description of this video. So we see that Jira Service Desk gives us a range of possibilities to customize our help center and this way stand out from those of other vendors. We can brand our customer portal, manage default permissions, set up custom request types or link the customer portal to a knowledge base in Confluence. Even this basic customization makes big difference for how it looks like, but it is still limited. That's why we should turn to additional solutions listed on the Atlassian marketplace. There are many apps which we can use to build an even more user-friendly customer portal. For example, extension for Jira Service Desk. This one gives us more flexibility in managing permissions. We can define which user groups have access to the customer portal, as well as particular request types. Keep in mind that Jira Service Desk Users Group is the default name for your agents and not the customers. As for the visual aspect, we can split the list of our request types into two columns, so there is no more need to scroll down the list in search of the right place to click. Also, we can add helpful external links and present them on the header bar. Those links can be presented in groups which act as drop-down menus, and you can also restrict their visibility to a particular project or a request type. The shared option makes a link visible on every customer portal in the instance, and the global one makes it appear also on the Help Center homepage. We can also translate our Help Center using another app, Translation for Geo Service Desk. This app enables us to translate both native and custom text on the Help Center to as many languages as there are supported in Jira, 
and thus to provide our customers with multilingual support. All it takes is to select the desired language, provide the text you want to translate as the key and the actual translation as the value. The share checkbox is very cool, because when you check it, the translation will apply to all service desk projects in your instance. So here's how a fully customized customer portal looks like. We see the company's logo and brand colors, custom request types with more of them at a time but only those you have permissions to, and some useful links on the header panel. If the translation app is used, you can switch languages by clicking the user avatar and selecting the right language in the drop-down menu. What's more, there are solutions on the marketplace which enable us to completely redesign our help center, but this is a topic for a whole another tutorial. In the next video, we'll proceed to the request form.